In this series, I've shown how to turn on and off LEDs, but how about dimming them? The approach to doing that is called PWM, Pulse Width Modulation. It's something we do a lot of, from dimming LEDs to creating full color LEDs, driving motors, the angles on servos, or even stepper motors. PWM is a really useful capability, and the Raspberry Pi Pico has 16 PWM channels. Hi, I'm John, your concierge to the world of the Raspberry Pi Pico, robotics, IoT, and other fun tech. Remember to subscribe and join my community. In this video, I'm going to talk about the basics of PWM with the Pico, using this to simply dim and fade an LED, fade being animating the dimming process. There are a couple of gotchas with PWM on the Pico. These won't bite you when you're just dimming a symbol or LED, as I'm going to do in the demo, but they have bitten me in more complex cases. I want to explain how to avoid these. If you like this video and it helps your learning, then why not buy me a virtual coffee or lunch or holiday? Use the super thanks button below the video. Please do hit the like button too on the video and subscribe for more. I really do appreciate it. I just want to introduce a few of the concepts here before we get into actually looking at the code and what a Pico can really do. So we've looked at a Pico being able to flash an LED, be able to turn it on and off. And all we're doing really in order to dim the LED is turning it on and off very quickly so that the eye can't distinguish the fact that actually it is truly flashing. Um, it just looks like it's dimming or has been dimmed. And that's all we're going to do. And I can show you here using a um, oscilloscope that actually this LED is actually turning on and off very quickly because we can see a square wave being displayed on the Pico. And that's really what PWM is. So the brightness of the LED is related to the amount of time that the signal is high compared with the amount of time it is low. So if it's uh, high for all of the time, then it's fully on. If it's um, not high at all, then it's fully off. And anywhere in between, you get that dimming effect. Now we call the portion of the time that it is high versus low, the duty cycle. And that's important because that's how we talk about PWM and we set a duty cycle. This video is sponsored by PCBWay. Every robot engineer needs a good partner to help with building PCBs and robot components. PCBWay is that perfect partner. PCBWay strive to be the most professional PCB manufacturer for prototyping and low volume production work in the world, which makes them a go-to place for makers like me to help me fabricate and assemble my low volume PCBs in their own in-house production service. PCBWay have lots of options for PCB types and coatings, along with instant quotations through their website for most services. They can help with project hardware too, through 3D printing, CNC machining, sheet metal work, or injection molding. Get some inspiration from the community on their project site, or buy some ready-made modules from the module store. Go take another look at PCBWay. A simplistic approach to doing PWM would be to just use the code that we used previously for blinking the LED. But if we blink it more quickly, then we actually get a PWM approach. Now, we need to vary then the amount of time that the LED is on from off in order to actually give that duty cycle effect. So here I've got a delay of pulse width for the, the amount of time that the LED is on versus the actual total frequency that we're going to um, be providing this waveform in uh, as in milliseconds. And that's the way I've sort of just written this very simplistic code. But I don't actually need to do that for a Pico because a Pico has already 16 PWM channels built into the hardware. So I can just ask the chip to provide that signal out. Now they're delivered via something called the slicers. And there are eight slicers which deliver that 16 PWM channels. I'll talk a bit more about that later on. But all of this is controlled by the Pico SDK library hardware PWM. 
all the code that I'm going to talk about today is included on my repo on GitHub. It's in a repo named RPI Pico Basics. And this is example 4 in there, which is called Fade. And you can build it using this process. So this is going to drive LED2, and we're going to do a set of fade uh, changes, or so dimming, um, ramping up, ramping down, to this uh, LED connected up onto GPIO2. Of course, use a resistor in to, to do that. And that looks like uh, this on my breadboard. So over in the repo, let's just have a look at this fade example. And I want to start, as I often do, by looking at the make file here. And the bit I just want to point out is that we are linking in a Pico SDK library called Hardware PWM. And that's important because that's what we need to work with the PWM. Now, this uh, example is a little bit more uh, complicated, it's a C++ example, I've actually split things out across uh, a class plus the main. So LED is what I'm going to be using here, and LED allows me to do things like set the brightness and have that brightness move and change by going through various modes, and the modes I can do are things uh, like LED on, LED off, fade to an, uh, a particular new level or fade or, or just fade up and down con constantly. What I want to say, show you really though is how we actually set this up. So let's have a look in led.cpp and you see what we need to do this time is when we initialize our GPIO pad and that's going to be 2 in this case, we're going to set its function to be PWM and then we can control how bright it is by setting its level using the set level. We also need to do a bit of work with the slicer. I just need to make sure the slicer is turned on. So I'm going to find out using this function which slicer I'm using and I'm going to make sure that I've turned it on. And so our function here when we do things like set brightness is I imagine my brightness is a value between 0 and 255 or hex FF. Um, and in order to give a realistic brightness, what I'm going to do is convert that into a 16-bit value by actually um, multiplying it by itself. So, you know, just power of 2, squaring it, if you like. Um, and that's really just to give it a... Uh, to look like a, a consistent brightness approach. And it's just the way the human eye works, actually, uh, against the PWM signal and a bit of physics in there as well. But this sort of works, and that's one way of, of getting brightness. If you're doing things like controlling a motor, you might actually have um, that uh, uh, scale working rather differently. Um, so that's what I'm doing there. So if we have a look at main, so main's actually a little bit more complicated. So what I've actually written here is a demo sequence. So it's going to go through a set of demos and it's going to keep calling a poll method on LED. And LED then is in charge of actually understanding how you adjust brightness over time as it goes through the various modes. So we're going to turn the LED on, turn it off, fade to full, fade to 50%, fade to off, and then just go into fade on and off um, in a cycle. And that's sort of the, the full demo that it will run. I'll show you a bit of that now. So we can see the LED uh, fade up from nothing and then fade back down to a level. Fade to off. And then do a little bit of a fading blink. That's not bad. So I talked about there being 16 PWM channels available on a Pico, which we can generally put to any of the Pico's external pins. And they're driven by these eight things called the slicers. Now that is important because the way that it works is the uh, slicers all have channels, A and B. 
and we're actually working with a slicer and then with one of the channels of that slicer in order to create a PWM signal. And those uh, slicers and channels map then to various pins on the Pico. And you will see that there is a bit of an overlap here. So some pins, for instance, uh, GPIO 0 and 16 are on the same slicer on the same channel. So you couldn't reuse both 0 and 16 and generate different PWM signals from both those pins. So you do have to take notice of which slicer and which channel these are coming from. And you can see that quite clearly on the wonderful graphic for the Pico's pinout that's available on this URL. So for every one of these uh, channels of each of these slicers, we can set a percentage duty cycle, which we do, as you've seen, as a actual numeric 16-bit value. And we've seen that we can set that using the, the function set GPIO level. What if we wanted to change the frequency though? So we wanted to make that wave shorter or longer. Can we do that? Yes, you can. Now, the caveat here is that changing that, we're doing that at slicer level, which means that it affects both of those channels. And that's really, really important um, because we can get ourselves into a trouble when we realize that the PWM signal we're generating from, ch uh, from channel A and B, we want to actually have different frequencies for. You can't do that. You have to have the same. They have to be consistent. The way that we actually set that frequency is in twofold. We need to set a clock divider. Um, what we're dividing down from the system clock by how, um, how much as a whole numeric value. And then the count wrapping. So we've seen that things count up to uh, 16 bits. Well, actually we can set the count wrap point to be before it gets to the full FFFF. And you can use that to further reduce and control the size of that wavelength. And we then initialize this in the PWM config that we give to the PWM init function. I've done a few other videos that touch on PWM. You might like to look at those. DDD, for example, my DIY dev droid uses PWM to drive the speed of the motors. I did a video talking about motor control for DDD and using the Pico to do that. That might be a good video to watch next. If this video or any of my videos helped you out, why not buy me a virtual cup of coffee or lunch to say thank you? There's a super thanks feature live on the channel now. Just click the button underneath the video. Thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please hit that like button and please subscribe to my channel so you don't miss the next video. Goodbye for now.